On the pitch, blink and he's gone. Such is his speed. But off the pitch, he's an ocean of calm. In this episode of In The Stands, hear how Lalianzwala Changte rose from prodigious talent to one of the most deadly forwards around in Indian football. So Zwala, welcome to In The Stands. This is a show where we try to kind of try and keep it light. Uh, we don't take ourselves too seriously on this show. Uh, even though you might do that a lot of the times because you're used to being a very intense on the pitch and off the pitch and we've heard all about your routine and your diet and how you conduct yourself setting that bar for footballers in India uh, at club level and at national level so pleasure to have you on the show I want to start off with taking you back if you could just close your eyes for a bit can you close your eyes for me and imagine that you're back in your village in Mizoram at this point of time and a young little kid wanting to become a footballer would you have imagined it all played out like this at this point of time, playing for Mumbai City FC and one of the mainstays for the national team at this point of time? Looking back to where I came from, I'm living a you know definite dream right now. Yeah. yeah. I never thought I'd be you know here sitting in front of you and you know playing in one of the best clubs yeah. in India yeah. and you know to represent our country. Yeah. It was you know just a dream back then. Yeah. And uh, to be a part of the national team and to play in the one of the best clubs in India, yeah, it's it's a complete dream come true. At what point of time did you actually feel like you could make it as a pro? When did, did that initial seed get planted in your head? Because I believe your parents are teachers, right? Yeah. And uh, football and teaching don't exactly mm -hmm. go along in the same mm -hmm. sentence, at least when it comes to Indian parents and Indian society. Mm -hmm. My dad and my grandpa was a, a huge fan of football. Mm -hmm. So football, playing football was never, you know, a problem for, for our family. Mm -hmm. But doing it professionally was like a bit challenging yeah. back then because yeah. uh, we've got JJ, Mama and like very, very few players from Mizoram yeah. playing professionally. So it was a huge challenge and, you know, a big risk to, to play and to be a, uh, become a professional footballer. And it was a a huge, huge risk, and like you mentioned, my, my mom and dad was uh, teachers, yeah. and they were more like into studies. Yeah. If you don't study well, you don't know well, or you don't do good in life. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was the mentality back then. But I, the the best thing was that they were like flexible. They you know respect the decisions yeah. Yeah. that I have made, yeah. and I couldn't be more you know thankful to them because. Even though I was a little kid, I had a dream to become, you know, professional footballer, yeah. and they respect that. And they didn't just look around and no, you can't be this and that. They were like flexible. Yeah, if you want to do this, you have to work hard, work. Yeah. Yeah. You have to do this and that. And I think what convinced them was um, the work that I put in every yeah. day. So the academy was one and then of course you had a bit of a stint with uh, DSK Shivajians, the main team as well, mm -hmm. did well over there and then your ISL journey began after that. Mm -hmm. I believe you played one match for North East mm -hmm. uh, and the shift after that to Chennai and FC happened, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Delhi Dynamo, Delhi Dynamo uh, I apologize, then, happened yeah. fairly, fairly swiftly after mm -hmm. that. Uh, I still remember you blazing on that uh, right wing in the in the white jersey and everyone said, oh my god, Changte is this up-and-coming talent at the JLN Stadium in Delhi, lighting it up. Uh, what was that initial exposure to the ISL like? Did you feel like, man, I'm here at the big stage now? And did you ever get that feeling that I've kind of arrived? Well, I was in notice. Uh, they all know that I wasn't you know, playing enough and I didn't get enough chances. And from that point, my like in my mind, when I get the opportunity again, I will like prove yeah. not to, to the people, to, to myself that I'm capable of playing the ISL. So I think I did that, and you know it was a joy. I was so lucky and fortunate enough to you know uh, play in the Lead Dynamos, and the coach was trusted me. That's really really important as a player, and then. Well, we didn't have like the season that we went yeah. through those two seasons, but uh, personally, I have learned many, many things, and yeah. I became more mature. Yeah, and, yeah. Of course, Dynamo's is one thing, and then Chennai FC, right? Mm 
yeah. uh, got so much love and adoration over there and that's why you truly became a cult hero at that club they adored you at that club right um playing under managers like Owen Coyle as mm-hmm. well he mm-hmm. gave you what kind of support did he give you at that point of time that made you realize and maybe unlock another level to your game well the best thing about him was i think uh, he recognized who works hard yeah uh in the training pitch he doesn't judge a player by you know their abilities their talent their their talent he judges a player by like giving his best in the pitch yeah so i think that's what he saw in me I, obviously i was not the best talented yeah. and i was not the, the best you know at that time of course but i think he recognized that he saw me that i want to give everything yeah so and then he respect that yeah. and one other thing was that he trust the players everyone who plays he trust them yeah. he yeah. just want them to you know explore themselves enjoy yeah. the football and that's that's the best thing as a footballer right mumbai now has played such a huge part in your development again mm-hmm. we saw you unlock levels to your game last mm-hmm. season as well that we hadn't seen before mm-hmm. uh, you won the golden ball best player of the league you won the aff men's player of the year uh, maybe a double a personal double in that in mm-hmm. that sense for you uh, and i know it will be the best season of your career mm-hmm. so far mm-hmm. but what led to you racking up the numbers and increasing them in such a short span of time you know because mm-hmm. i'm sure the work was put in for a lot of years but mm-hmm. suddenly your performances and your consistency just went up did des buckingham had have a lot to do with that as well mm-hmm. well let me go back a little bit further yeah. um before i joined mumbai cfc uh and i was thinking i was in my last contract with Chennai FC and I was thinking a lot where to join and where would be you know where would I fit in so Mumbai City came in that time they were the champions yeah. and they you know that doesn't bother me and I had not think twice but uh, one of the reasons that you know I joined Mumbai City FC was uh the day that I had a call with that's right um unfortunately he's not here anymore mm. so we had a chat and he told me that uh i'm going to make you one of the best players in india and wow. i i believe you i believe in your ability he said that to you i'm going to make yeah. you one of the best players in india yeah wow. so he told me that i believe in your ability i know what you can do and you know as a player you don't have to think twice yeah. and knowing that thing so i i joined uh, mumbai city fc yeah. and he was on his words yeah. and then like we uh, we put the words into actions right. after that right. it's it was all about training every day after that extra training yeah uh, i read be shooting or crossing yeah and uh, one thing that helps me a lot is all, uh is analyzing my game mm. and my training sessions mm. every week mm. so that helps me a lot as well yeah yeah let's talk about the national team mm-hmm. uh again i want you to close your eyes once more uh <laughs> and visualize yourself in 2015 mm. you've been picked for the saf championship mm-hmm. squad you've made your debut against nepal uh you have also then gone on to score your debut goal in that manner can you imagine it playing in your head right now one step over onto the left side and boom yeah, like yeah. that could you have imagined scoring a better debut goal that to for your country no oh, man that was like my first professional game yeah. i was still in the academy yeah. and i never had a you know a, a game professionally for the club as right, well right and to score for the country was you know yeah. words couldn't describe how happy i was that yeah. day man so what's the atmosphere in the dressing room now compared to what it was back then because now whenever we hear from chetri bhai and whenever we hear from jingan and the other senior characters mm-hmm. in the dressing room there is a very very high standard and expectation set of other players in mm-hmm. the team like mm-hmm. chetri said that mm-hmm. uh when we were at the camp mm-hmm. especially at the intercontinental mm-hmm. cup camp that you had you stayed together for about 61 days yeah and that's two months almost two yeah. months right so you said that if one player is not doing what 
the other players are doing it affects the entire performance of the team as mm-hmm. a whole right mm-hmm. you never of course face that problem because you always motivated and dedicated <laughs> in that sense uh, but is that is that the case where you know it's a very 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 tightly knit and professional environment now in the in the indian national team well when it comes to national team you are representing 1.4 something billion right yeah so you can't you know take off your mind and go somewhere else yeah. you have to be focused i don't say all the time but yeah. you know at least during the trainings yeah. and uh some other times in the gym yeah. and of course especially before the game yeah the atmosphere needs to be you know like perfect right and it was good i mean like everyone was like we've been together for like 3 4 years yeah. playing together knowing each other yeah. and that was a great thing i think we have learned so many things yeah from each other and we can share that like our deep secrets also right. right so that's when we take this into the game you know you fight for right me you fight for i fight for you yeah so that that what that's what happens right yeah. now in the team and how important are the fans going to be zola over there well you know we couldn't do much without the fans yeah. we were playing like almost two two seasons right right in the, uh, during the covid yeah yeah well there's no joy man seriously yeah, yeah. without playing without the fans yeah. so it tells us that without the fans we couldn't do much yeah but without uh, with them supporting us yeah. we can do a lot yeah a lot yeah so i you know ask all the fans out there like to come and support us yeah. you know but uh, zola it's been absolutely lovely to have you and hearing you speak with such motivation gives all of us on the other side also much hope and belief for the asian cup and for the world cup qualifiers beyond you belong to a new generation of indian players who play with fearlessness and confidence and i wish that continues for long for your career and for the national team as well so thank you so much thank you so much bye right, let's thank go you. have a good one thank you And that was the uh, Lelian Vala Changte on in the stands of course stay tuned to the ISL YouTube page and the other social channels of the Indian Super League to stay tuned for more such content do take care